my channel. If you've never seen my channel before, I'm Sarah. Here on this channel, I share a lot of home decor, thrifting, antiquing, vlogs, and every Friday until it's time to decorate for Christmas, I do a Fall Friday video where I show you a DIY, fall home decor, just something fall related that you can take inspiration from. So today's Fall Friday video, I'm gonna be showing you a fall floral haul. That's a tongue twister from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna show you a DIY fall vintage inspired picture. You'll see what I'm talking about later on, but on one of my previous Fall Friday videos, I created a fall arrangement in a big wooden box. I took those same florals and did another arrangement in another way, which was in a basket. And I put that basket up there on my tobacco basket. So today, I'm gonna to be making a whole new arrangement, but from flowers that you can buy from the Dollar Tree. The flowers that I used before were just random pieces that I had over the years, and I just kind of made it work. These flowers today are gonna to be pieces that you can buy at your local Dollar Tree. So you can recreate my floral arrangement step by step. So let's get started. I had not been to my Dollar Tree since they put out their fall florals, honestly because over the years, I've really been disappointed with their selection and they would be picked over super fast, but I decided to swing by today and oh my goodness, they had a lot to choose from and really good things. So I'm gonna show y'all what I got. tree now we're gonna get started on making that arrangement I am gonna do it step by step like I did the other video so if you're not interested you can just fast forward until it's time to do the second DIY if you're not interested in the step-by-step -step process of it I also wanted to mention I am wearing my cottage on Jones t-shirt and I do have these for sale if you would like one these are just for fun I barely make anything off of it but if you're interested in it, I do have a link in the description box that stays there all the time. You can purchase your own Cottage on Jones shirt. We can all just sport them together. They have a lot of colors, a very wide range of sizes and different styles. They have t-shirts, um, hoodies, stuff like that. If whatever you like is out of stock, they do update it regularly. Just go back and check it out later if something that you like is sold out because it might be back in stock. Here's the box I'm going to be using. I don't know if I mentioned it earlier. I am going to be selling this arrangement and box on my Facebook. I do wish I could offer it to all of y'all, but it would be very expensive to ship. This box is really big. But anyway, let's get started. I know a lot of people ask about my wire cutters. I don't remember where I got these. It was very last minute for a wedding I was doing. I have some linked in the description box that I've used before and they're just as good as these. You definitely need some good wire cutters for any floral arrangement that you'll be doing. Okay, so the last floral arrangement I made, I told y'all that I really don't have a rhyme or reason to how I make these. I kind of picked up on my own process as I was making it. I was like, well, maybe I do have a process. I'm gonna cut all of these flowers as far down as I can. Don't get rid of this stem, we're gonna use it later. So just set it aside. I know a lot of people take off the greenery um, on their flowers like this, but we're, we're gonna leave it because it'll add some filler and some green. So I'm just gonna start placing these randomly, very randomly. <laughs> I have three round flower foams in this. They're just old and it just works. You don't need to invest in good flower foam to make something work. In fact, this flower foam is wet foam that you use with um, real florals. So I'm just making what I have work. Okay, one thing about these florals from the Dollar Tree, the tags are horrible to get off. 
they are very sticky and thick and it just creates a hard time to get them off. All right, for this one, I'm just gonna spread it out as much as I can. Really fan it out. See how much bigger that looks already? This one I'm gonna place over here on the left side. I can already tell that I'm gonna spend a lot of time getting all these stickers off of these branches. Okay, for this one, I'm also gonna cut it into its own stems. These, I'm just gonna place around randomly too. Um, some of these are like further down and you can push them up. Okay, this one is the fall leaves with the pumpkin and berries. I'm gonna put it in the center. I'm gonna put this one in this corner. Next, I'm taking these burgundy flowers, cutting those. I'm just gonna cut two off for now because I don't know if I wanna use the whole stem of these. I'm also gonna tear the leaves off because they look a little flimsy. And you can kind of push these down or spin it in between your hands like that and it kind of just fluffs it up. So I'm pulling the leaves off and then pushing it down and then spinning it. I'm gonna do another one of these. Okay, I'm gonna take this one. I'm gonna cut this half off and use just this for now. And I'm gonna keep them together and put them over here. Okay, I've learned if you forcefully and very fast rip the tag off, it comes off clean. So I'm gonna have to remember that. <laughs> I'm gonna take this one that has the little squash on it and the, um, the berries, and I'm gonna place it kind of in the center on this side. Okay, this one I'm gonna spread apart really good and I'm gonna put this one in the center. You can kind of weave it in between flowers. Okay, I'm gonna take these cream flowers. I really like these. They, these look more natural than the others. As natural as they can get. <laughs> and I'm gonna put this one in the back right here. Like that. Let me get another one. Okay, I'm gonna take another one of these and put it over here that okay it's starting to come together just a little bit and I still have all of my fun florals left so I have another one of these eucalyptus I'm sorry that the clouds are coming out and the lighting is really dark let me turn on a light and see if that helps okay maybe that helps a little bit take these and fan them out again kind of bring some front back make kind of a star shape that way it's going in different directions and it looks like multiple stems and I'm gonna put him back here and like I said before just kind of weave him in you can bend some of those branches down because they're wired and that way it looks like it's kind of fallen off that's really pretty like that one two three <laughs> I did it that's the secret to it not that I should have to do it that is a good way to get them off I spread this one apart like that. I'm gonna put this one in the center because I only have one of them. So I'm gonna bend some of these branches and I'm gonna weave some of these branches. Okay, next I have these cute little wispy things, spreading it apart. And I have two of these, so I'm gonna use them on either side. take the other one and do the same thing on the other side. Okay, I noticed that this side needs some height. I'm gonna stick one of these long stems over here. It also needs more leaves. So I'm gonna stick these in. 
if you're looking at your arrangement and you've done it step by step like I've told you, but it's not looking right, just start playing with it. Start bending the branches. These branches can go in any direction. Just play with it until it looks good. It's how you like it. You might not like yours as wispy as mine, or you might like yours more wispy. So just play around with it and find what you like. Now for a fun element, I'm gonna do the feathers. So spreading these apart like that, and I'm gonna stick them in the very back. That just adds so much to your arrangement. I'm gonna do the same for this one, spread it. I'm gonna stick this one right here on the left side. I'm gonna bend these downward to where it's kind of pointing down. And my third one is gonna go on this side. Just like that. While you're looking at your arrangement, especially in this stage where you're adding like fun flowers and filler, you wanna look at it from all angles. So I need to make sure that this side looks good. See like this, I need to point this one kind of that way. Make sure that the pieces that you won't see are sticking out. Okay. Now for some berries. I'm gonna push these leaves all the way down because I really don't want them seen, but I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to cut off the stems on this one. Y'all know the drill, spread it apart. Those are super cute. And I have another one. For these green hydrangeas, I am gonna cut them. I think I'm gonna wait till the very end to place those in. For my little wicker pumpkin, let's see, I'm a bit, oh, I accidentally just broke it, but not all the way. I thought it was wired. These are not wired, PSA. <laughs> uh, okay, I think I'm gonna put this little guy in the front. I kinda like him peeking through right there on his side. I have this long skinny stem. I've been doing flowers for years and it wasn't until my fall arrangement video, someone suggested this to me and I was like, oh my word, that's genius. So whoever you were, thank you so much for suggesting that. You are so smart. So I'm gonna stick this burlap pumpkin over here, kind of in this gap. He fits perfectly nestled in that little corner. All right, I'm gonna take another stem and my little white foam pumpkin. Now he's a stem. And I'm gonna place him in here. Guys, we're almost done. All we have left are these. Now I know it looks crazy, this green against this orange, but trust me, once they're all in there, you are gonna love it, and it adds so much depth and interest into your arrangement. I'm just gonna start placing these randomly, especially if I see a gap. These are little accents, so you don't want it to be sticking up too high. You wanna make sure that um, they're really nestled and they're good. Okay, I'm looking at the arrangement and I do not like this flower right here. So I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna put it somewhere over here because there's lots of burgundy on this side and none on this side. So I'm gonna stick this flower right there. And if you have like an extra leaf or something, you can put it right there, but I think it's fine. Let me bend some of these. Okay, I think I'm done. All right, here it is all finished and in better lighting. And I will show you a close up of everything.
It's really pretty, y'all. And this is all that I had left over. So I really used almost every single thing. My house looks like a floral shop. <laughs> I think it's so funny that I have all of these flowers and stuff just sitting on my table. Okay, on to DIY number two. This is certainly not my idea. I've seen this all over Instagram, but it's taking an old picture. I think this is just like an old home interior picture, making it look like a fall scene. Now, most of the ones that I've seen they do theirs in like Halloween and they'll paint like ghosts and stuff and make it really dark. I'm just gonna do mine to make it look like fall. So, I first need to take it out of the frame. So I have a screwdriver and I'm gonna unscrew it all. Wow, that frame is really dirty but I think I'm just gonna leave it dirty because it adds to the, to the look. Okay, this is the picture. I actually, I actually really love it, um, but it, it's looking a little springy. So we're gonna fall this up. I bought this picture from Goodwill for like $2. This is a super cheap DIY. I see those home interior pictures all the time in Goodwills and my local thrift store. So I have a whole bunch of colors, just anything that looks like fall. The only one I had to pick up was orange. I did not have any orange, but how can you make it look like fall without orange? So I have an old paint palette and I'm just going to start putting just a little bit of each color. Some brown, some burgundy or red. And y'all, I am not a painter. So if you feel like there's no way I can do this, I don't paint, well, same. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, but we're just gonna do it together and find out. So, can y'all see good? Let's see. Hopefully y'all can see it better like that. We are gonna get started. I'm so nervous. I have all my paint brushes. I have a really tiny one, um, like a medium size. I have a fan brush, a larger one. And then this one, um, it's more bristly and that will be good for the trees like that. So I have painted before. Me and my brother-in-law, who is my one of my best friends, a couple years ago, we got into this kick of painting and we would search for Bob Ross tutorials on, on YouTube and we would replicate his paintings. I'll have to find a picture of the one I did and, and show y'all. It was so much fun and I think I did a pretty good job. So I do have a little bit of experience and I'm gonna try to remember some of his techniques um, to put in this painting too. Let's just get started. So I'm gonna start with the tree because I feel like that's gonna be the easiest. Okay, I remember Bob Ross. We would start with a little bit of green and I'm put a little bit of white in it to lighten it up a little bit. And I'm just gonna stamp the tree with this bristly brush. Oh my word, it's already looking like a real tree. I mean, it is a real tree, but a tree with leaves. <laughs> okay, these are our base leaves. Then I'm gonna wipe off some of that paint. I really, I don't even have water. I'm just kind of winging this. Then I'm gonna go into the orange with a little bit of red orange and red mixed together, a little bit of brown too. Is it working? It's working. Y'all, this is so much fun. Oh my word. Maybe, maybe I do like painting. 
Maybe that's my new thing. <laughs> okay, now I'm really going in and trying to cover up some of that green to where it's mostly the orange. Okay, and then I remember Bob Ross going in with a little bit of yellow and I think a little bit of green. No, it was just yellow. He kind of created like a chartreuse color. So like um, yellow and green mixed together and you don't want to swirl it. You want it to be like a little green and a little yellow here and there. Kind of like that right there. See, it's like kind of, it's kind of green and kind of yellow. Ooh. All right. And I'm going to go into it and start stamping too. Let me. Okay. I think that's a little bit too green. Okay, okay, it's coming together. Now I'm gonna go in with a little bit more of that orange and brown and do this again. And really stamp it randomly. Bob Ross who? I love that. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is kind of go into these trees back here. I'm not going to do as much, but just a little something something. So I'm just going to go with the same process and stamp, especially on these outer parts. Do y'all see that? I'm going to go in a little bit more red. I'm like talking to y'all like I know what, I, what I'm doing. <laughs> And then over here to these, and make these more red. Don't forget the ones like in the background. Okay, that looks good. Go in a tiny, with a tiny bit of orange. Oh, I remember something Bob Ross said. He said that the leaves on top, they turn first. So he, he said to always like do your brighter fall colors on the top. I was like, that's so smart. Bob Ross was a legend and, and he was an amazing painter and he was so smart. Okay, that's looking so good. I'm gonna go in with a tiny bit of yellow into these background trees, just here and there. Just add some depth. Oh, I forgot about, forgot about these trees back here. Um, and for the grass, should I paint the grass y'all or no? Let's see. Okay, I have like barely any brown on my brush and I'm just gonna, Kind of stamp the yard to where it's not so green like i am i dipped my brush in a little bit of brown and i wiped it off like that's how little i have okay that looks good i don't know if y'all can see in this water right here it's like reflections so you also want to go in there that's another thing Bob Ross taught me <laughs> is to make sure you're doing your reflections in the water. What a smart man. Then we're gonna do the bottom right here. Another thing on his tutorials was he said, um, in the fall leaves are on the ground. So make sure you're putting some leaves at the bottom of the tree. So that's what I'm gonna do, especially um, those yellow leaves that are falling really fast. So those fall leaves would be all up in there. 
I am really struggling about what I want to do right here, but I'll figure something out. I'm mixing a little bit of yellow and white and brown, kind of to create like a tan color. And I'm gonna start stamping over here. You still want there to be like depth in the leaves and stuff. So we're gonna leave it like that. But for the little bitty flowers, should I paint those like an orange? I don't know, let's see. Okay, that looks kind of cute. I'm still letting some of that um, white show on these flowers. I'm gonna add more yellow in the center of them. I'm gonna dot a little bit of yellow into these trees. Not much. I'm actually using the wrong brush. <laughs> there we go. Okay, y'all, I think I'm done with it. What do y'all think? Am I missing any trees? I don't think I am. Oh my word, it's so cute. I do see a little spot over here. I am like so impressed. Okay, I think I'm done. I don't know about these flowers down here, but they will just have to do. Okay, I have my frame. And I'm, I'm gonna take my little painting and put it back in there. And I'm gonna screw it back in. All right, here it is all done. It came out so cute and I cannot wait to style it. projects. I really hope that you enjoyed today's Fall Friday video and got some really good ideas for your fall decor. I just kind of went into it blindly but I love the way they came out and you can do that too. You don't always have to have a plan or know what you're doing to execute something. So I hope this gives you the motivation and the inspiration to just go for it. If you enjoyed today's video, please subscribe and like it. And it would mean so much to me if you shared this with your friends or on your social media so that others can see some fall inspiration too. Thank y'all again so much and I will see y'all next time.